What's going on guys and welcome to today's video. Now today's video is going to be uh, my current approach to fat loss and also we've got a little Gymshark mini haul coming at the end of the video because they have a six sale coming up this week. So um, and also forgive me if I start to get a little bit sweaty. I literally just got back from cardio and my body's just not regulating the temperature so yes. Uh, anyway so I thought I'd start off today's video of my current fat loss diet with a bit of context and an overview of basically the two different kinds of approaches to fat loss that I see. So I'll start with the one that I'm not doing. Now this is what most people do to get quick results and is literally just a really big deficit, slashing a lot of calories out, increasing cardio immediately and you're going to lose fat very quickly. So the advantages to this is I've done this in the past. This was my last cut that I did very quick. Now the advantages to this is you will see very fast fat loss. So this might be anywhere over 600, 700 calorie deficit, um, basically jumping straight into it. You're gonna lose like a kilo a week on average. Um, and then it's obviously gonna trail off. So the advantage to this is you will see fat loss very fast. Another advantage is it's easier to commit to like an all or nothing approach, especially with my mentality. It's very easy for me to go, that, that's it, I'm dieting today. You know, cut out all bad food, really go crazy, start working hard, and you feel like you're working hard. So um, I've enjoyed that in the past, and also it's very motivating and satisfying to see faster results. Another advantage of this is that you actually, you can get out of the calorie deficit quicker, because arguably, if you only need 12 weeks to diet like crazy, then you can spend more time in a calorie surplus and get back into muscle gain. Now, unfortunately, the reality is it's not that simple because like my past diet, I spent a long time in a very aggressive fat loss approach because your mentality's cooked. And then I ended up spending um, just a bit of time in maintenance and it wasn't really any more time back into a surplus. So ideally, it didn't, really, it didn't work out for me. Um, but the negatives to this, and there are a few negatives, is that you will lose muscle a lot quicker, you'll lose strength a lot quicker, uh, your mindset will be basically pretty because you will be going from um, eating nothing so then your cravings are through the roof and all you want to do is get out of the diet phase. So it also makes you have that weird body dysmorphia where you don't think you're lean when you probably have zero body fat at all. You're like a Ronnie Coleman negative 2% body fat. Like I said, that downside is that you probably can lose muscle and it also creates that mentality of yo-yo dieting because you'll go all out dieting and then you'll just think, I just want food and you'll go crazy diving into food. So it's not really practicing a sustainable approach. And so that's where we get into the alternative approach, which is what I'm doing with this cut, is the slow and steady method of fat loss. So this is the conventional dieting approach. It's not going too crazy. It's not increasing cardio immediately it's not like you know it's just a slight calorie deficit where you're over time you're gonna see the results it's gonna take a little bit longer but it's sustainable and it's consistent so the advantages of this is like I just said it's very sustainable also you don't feel like you're dieting as much so I've been doing this now for a few weeks and really I'm not I'm not hungry at all uh, and I'm slowly losing body fat another advantage is that you're keeping a lot of strength so your gym sessions are 10 times better I'm really enjoying training at the moment and on top of this you're also creating those good practices when it comes to dieting in general so just the slow and steady sustainable approach it's not going to lead you into a really dirty bulk at the end of it you're not going to just want food like crazy ideally you'll finish up your dieting phase it might take you four or five months maybe even longer depending on how much body fat you have to lose and then you might be in a good place mentally to go you know what let's go maintenance for a little bit then we'll go slight surplus and you're not going to have that urge to just dive into food because as I've <laughs> just literally dive into a whole pool of cereal because as I've said before when you are really restricting calories your body has this survival mechanism and I hate to use that word but it's basically like it's the way that I conceptualize it it's like if you have no food at all for a long period of time your body goes what are you doing we're dying I'll eat this leaf can I eat it and then so you really your body wants to eat everything and your ghrelin which is your hunger hormone your leptin which controls a lot of metabolism all those hormones pretty much get pretty funky so they are your ghrelin is super high you're hungry all the time your leptin is super low so you have ridiculous cravings and all your body wants to do is conserve energy and eat more food so that's what happens when you get really aggressive with fat loss so we don't really want to do that I wouldn't really recommend that if I wanted my coaching clients to get crazy results uh, easy I would just set them on ridiculously low calories and go stick to it trust the process and they do it they get shredded no doubt I have awesome transformation photos but they'd be left in a pretty weird place because then after that they go hang on I haven't told them how to deal with all these cravings I haven't told them any hormonal things to look out for when you know the dick stops working not really but actually so it's just one of those things where if you diet too crazily too aggressively for too long it's bad news so what the best approach is and the recommended approach is a slow and steady approach so now that I've kind of took 20 minutes to reel off the benefits and the disadvantages of either approaches um, just so you guys know that's the basically the transparency there and then I think we should get into today's current diet so let's look at my diet overview my current diet will put me in a slight calorie deficit 
Calories will be around 2200 with around 190 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, and 80 grams of fat. The way you distribute your carbs and fat is entirely up to you and based on personal preference. I'm also not restricting too many foods here, and my diet will consist of the following meals. Meal one will be three eggs fried in butter on three pieces of toast. And if you cook your toast more than this, you're an absolute psycho. So on my other video, people commented saying my toast was too raw and it made me want to delete my channel altogether. Anyway, this is meal one. Meal two is 180 grams of chicken thighs marinated in honey soy and baked in the oven at 205 for 15 minutes. I'll serve this with 300 grams of sweet potato sliced and baked until crispy. I'll also add a handful of greens to this meal. So when people think of dieting, they automatically think of dry chicken breast. I much prefer thighs. They're tastier, juicier. Obviously the fat content is higher, but calories aren't the enemy here. So this is meal two. Meal three will be 200 grams of lean steak, cooked to perfection in the sous vide for 60 minutes before coating it in garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and paprika and then frying it in butter for a nice sear. I'll serve this with 250 grams of rice. So this will be my post-workout meal. I found steak in the sous vide is literally perfect. You can't beat it. And I wouldn't stress about mixing carbs and fats here. Obviously we have a bit of higher fat content for the steak, but that's fine because we're in a deficit so it doesn't really matter. So this will keep me full for a long time and this is meal three. Meal four will be a snack of 200 grams of fat-free Chobani yogurt and one scoop of vanilla Oxy Whey and a generous serving of Zac 10. So usually I'm not very hungry before bed, so this will be the last meal, just something to hit that sweet tooth. So either this or the protein ice cream, and I'll top it with any granola or cereal or anything and everything, whatever I'm feeling. So this is my last meal. Now as far as supplements go, I will take Oxytred, my favorite fat burner first thing in the morning. Now I don't take this because it's a fat burner, I take it because it wakes me up first thing in the morning, that's why I love it. Um, and I'll take it again pre-workout with PSI, so basically some vasodilators for pump before a workout, and five grams of creatine. Creatine's good during a cut, a lot of people ask me, because it'll help you hang on to the muscle that you do have. So it helps with muscle retention, um, and it doesn't matter when you take it. I'll just throw it in my pre-workout because it's easier. I'll also have Oxy Whey throughout the day if I need to, so this is in my before bed meal. Um, but sometimes if I'm feeling just a shake, I'll just, I'll just have one because it's nice. It's just delicious. So with EHP as well, guys, I think right now as, as I've posted this, they'll have a crazy sale on, so it's like 50% off. So I'll put the links below, but um, these are my favorites. You can't go wrong with any flavor. I'll also take Omega-3. So these are just great for anti-inflammatories. They have a host of benefits. So I'd recommend Omegas to anyone. I'll also have a multivitamin in case I'm not getting any micronutrients through my food. So I feel like that's always beneficial just to keep it in. It's hard. You don't really know if it's doing anything, but I just like to keep them in. And also a nighttime formula occasionally. So these are usually good if I end up training too late and I want to calm down. Oxyrem is quite strong. Um, that will make you have a very deep sleep, but you can also do things like theanine, magnesium, and ashwagandha if you just want to calm down at night and not really get put into that deep sleep. But if you do have trouble sleeping, Oxyrem is pretty great. Now let's talk workouts and cardio. Now in terms of workouts and cardio, I recommend you guys base this off whatever works best for you. For me, because over time, I will do my cardio in the morning and then weights in the evening. So usually I like to split them up, but if I had to choose one or the other, I would probably do cardio just directly after weights. I don't like doing cardio before weights, it affects my session. My cardio routine will either be a morning walk outside for around 30 to 45 minutes, or 20 minutes on the treadmill walking on an incline. I tend to do whatever kind of cardio I most feel like doing on the day. So today, for example, it was just a walk up the street, but other times it's usually just an incline treadmill walk. Now, as far as workouts go, I'll train for 80 minutes, five days a week, following a modified push-pull leg split. God, this is the most disgusting arm pump ever. I probably, <laughs> it looks gross as on camera. So guys, basically every workout I train with the same philosophy, I'll take one to three sets to build. So just warm up, slowly increasing the weight, and then I'll hit about two sets of my work sets, which is basically failure. I say basically because not many people know where failure is. So if I go 10 to 12 rep max, I'm gonna go as hard as I can on the first work set and then try hit that same weight again. So I might do two work sets, that's basically it. Um, rest time will be around two to three minutes, basically enough just to get ready for the next set again. So we're not going like 40 seconds rest, running around, sprinting like crazy. That's not the right intensity that we want here. Intensity in terms of how much you can get out of one set and how far you can push yourself, you're gonna need a rest. So high intensity training, two to three minutes rest. So that's basically it guys. That is my current diet plan and training routine and I'm gonna adjust this as I go. If you guys wanna see another video, make sure you give this a like, comment below so I can see and then I'll make little updates for you guys. So 
Uh, I'm not gonna end the video here though, because Gymshark are doing their yearly sale this week. I thought I'd give you a little, a little clothing haul slash review of some of my favorite tops, but I'm not gonna do it just me, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna get some special guests to help me out. So, I hope you enjoy this insanity. Well, this is one of my favorite striggers. It is the Legacy Gymshark White Strigger. I actually bought this strigger for Master Wayne when uh, he started to get a really big back. Because there's one thing you want to do when you get a big back, and that is show it off. Now, if you don't like white, there's about 50,000 other colors. So guaranteed, they're not going to fail you. Well, uh, this next little number here is called the Outline T. It comes in a few more different colors. Uh, red, maybe, I don't even know. But the thing is, is the colors don't even exist. They're not fucking real, it's fairy dust. Anyway, this is Murph's favorite top. Uh, the discount is right there. And we gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. We gotta at least double them. Next, we have a glitch team. What's a glitch team, you may be thinking? Well, it doesn't matter. It's stretchy, look at that, it's turquoise, it's beautiful, it, it allows you to breathe through the nose, like this, look at that, wave your arms about, that's it, have a little laugh, breathe through the nose, good. Hi guys, uh, this is one of my favourite long sleeve tees by Gymshark, it's called the long sleeve base, now that is what Hagrid must be hiding behind his robe, that's what Ron wants to steal out of my cupboard when I'm sleeping, and that is why Hermione can't get enough of this D. Alright Harry. Shut up, Hagrid, you fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, one look at this, and you'll say that is a wetsuit. But no, it's an element, long sleeve, high neck. Now, this is absolutely great for warming up in the gym and just feeling that muscle hypertrophy maximizing pump. There were stories of some bros back in the gym that actually died of hypothermia because they couldn't quite warm up. And if those two dickheads had one of these, they would have made it. And if you happen to find any water, well, have a surf. Oh my god, look at this stretch, look at the color, that's fantastic. This is the Vital T in the Green Mile. And no, not the Green Mile, that is also a very good movie, but this is t-shirt. Anyway, turn to side, see the biceps, the triceps covered, the back looks fantastic, it's so wide, the lats are covering. Look at Zach, he doesn't know what to do with himself, he's so happy, he's come to the camera, look at the sleeves, check it. Oh, this is terrific. Abs, he's, he's definitely coming day and night to that pump, but this is fantastic. <laughs> right? <laughs> And that is it for this video, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that and took something out of it. Um, again, my needs are different to your needs. So I'm just giving you guys a little bit of an insight into how I approach things. But by all means, questions in the comments. Uh, and I, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was I know that was very weird. If you're new to this channel, you'd be like, what the hell? That wasn't even good or whatever. But um, I don't really mind. It's, it's, it's all good. Um, it's, all, it's all part of the fun. So guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you need any diet and training plans, the link is in the description or go to zachpenefit.com. Otherwise, that is it from me and you guys definitely, definitely know what to do. Stay massive.